so not it up. Recording history on the television set. Really? Say that to the microphone. <laughs> what, is this, what does it say? <laughs> Go on. I want you to notice all these subtle touches, like the, the motion indicates that this is being done in 1988. Uh, we are recording. <laughs> I would like to announce that this is a family album photo video that's designed for your enjoyment. So if that doesn't come through right away, it's not my fault. This is very serious. This is in spite of the inanity of the beginning of the introduction. This is an attempt to record forever. Cut! Cut! <laughs> Gunella, a.k.a. Gina, my mother, at some very early age, apparently. What she was famous for in this photograph was the 17-inch waistline, which uh, probably bland expression on her face that comes from not enough. Anyway, when she came to the United States, she was 17 years old. And she borrowed money from her uncle. And she walked barefooted for miles to, to go to her uncle's house to borrow the money, carrying her shoes to put them on at the last minute. And he gave her money for passage. And she came over here and worked in a cigar factory and led a very isolated life, I assume. And whenever she had enough money saved, she would go back to Italy and collect another one of her sisters to come on. And they would both work. And then they would go back and collect another relative until they had uh, three sisters, four sisters, and one brother and one mother, grandmother, over here. My uncle Amerigo always marked the pictures in the albums like Mama Marquisio as if he would forget who his mother was. I assume this is my father and mother. At what time, I don't know. But that was a great mustache. I loved my father and I hated my mother for reasons which should be plain. But may not be. Anyway, on the left there is my grandmother, my father's mother, whose name was Noni, whose name was Jacinta, which means hyacinth. And the lady on the right, I assume, is my mother as a young woman. And the chickens were always a, a tremendous <laughs> force, you know, presence in my life. We had a chicken farm and a boarding house, and a lot of our lives was wrapped up in, in chicken affairs, like killing 50 or 60 chickens on a Friday night and plucking them and cleaning them and so on. But I just love this photograph. I think it is really interesting. Taken with a brownie when I was a teenager, and it's an, also one of my old-time favorites. I took this one. This is my grandmother, Noni Jacinta, who was in the other photograph. And at this point, she was totally out of her head. That rather mean and malicious, senile old lady. And that's my father in the background. In October, we used to go and rake up a bushel and bag the apples. And he would, <laughs> being a good son, he would rake the apples down to her so she could put them in the bushel basket and feel useful. And then we would take them over to the cider mill and make cider, which would, we drank as cider and then as hard cider. And then it turned into vinegar, and we had vinegar for the boarding house for the following summer. Do you know who these people are? I think the person on the right is my sister, Vi. But I couldn't resist that, that weird milk toasty character in the middle with the double-breasted jacket and the tower person on the left. So that, <laughs> it's just, that's it. My mother's mother, and her, she was a very tiny lady, and her name was Regina Gonella. And she was the original uh, steel fist in the velvet glove. She, she was a terrible, guilt-provoking, sweet little old lady. I also disliked intensely. <laughs> oh, man. This must have been awful. I mean, she looks kind of like Walter Brennan. 
Right, yeah. She always used to push the hair off my face. I would have my hair hanging down my, or by my forehead, and she would push it back all the time. And I finally cut a, an enormous semicircle of baldness on the top of my skull, which <laughs> annoyed the whole family intensely. I was delighted to find out. The Iron Fist. Right, she used to feed us gruel. Oh. She used to feed us soup made out of, uh, you know, bouillon cubes and, and breadcrumbs. Her son lost his leg, my uncle Pinning, lost his leg when he was nine years old in a trolley accident in Milano or Torino or someplace. And she kept him under her thumb for the rest of her life. She figured no woman would ever want to marry a legless man except for his money. And so anytime anybody expressed the slightest interest in him, she viciously intervened. She'd you know, run in and sit between them and so on. And she always wore these ditzy old lady clothes and prayed a lot. And I'm told she was not senile when she died, she prayed a lot, which is about the same thing as far as I'm concerned, but what the hell. What is it, Peppino? Right, she's a, a lot. In, in, my, uh, in the 1930s, we were always up to, this was before the 30s, this must have been before pre World War World I. But we were always up on top of the roof taking pictures for reasons which escaped me. But I think this is my mother. On the other hand, it might be my Aunt Mary. I think I guess it's my mother. They were all dressmakers, and so they used to make these gorgeous dresses for themselves. Look at all those nice tailored details in the yoke and the dress there. Wow. Very nice. My Aunt Vika used to have a dress that was so hobble-skirted that they had to, one day she couldn't get on the trolley car because the skirt was too tight, so they had to open up some seams in order for her to be able to spread her legs far enough apart to climb up the steps. Look at those shoes, wow, this is great. Great dress, I wish I knew where they were now. <laughs> That's the 59th Street Bridge in the background. My, my mother arrived in, in New York, I guess about when it was being built, and she fell madly in love with somebody who was a construction worker on the bridge, and she used to stare out the window at him all the time, hoping that he would catch her eye, which of course he never did. And then there's a great 59th Street Bridge story, which I wish I could, the, the, do I have time to tell it? Uh, when the bridge was almost completed, some, some lunatic started saying it was going to be the end of the world, so all the Italians took all their money out of the bank and spent it madly on having wonderful times and then penniless and, and satiated and, and exhausted they went and stood on the newly opened 59th street bridge to wait for the end of the world and you know on the proposed day and of course the world didn't end so they went back to their homes penniless Is this my mother again? Does it look like her? I have no idea. But look at those gorgeous things. Yeah, I guess it must be if she was my mother in the other picture. I mean, she was a tough lady and she was a survivor and she had a strong uh, and, and drive for life. And um, Joe's mother, my father's mother, arranged sort of the marriage, figuring that her, he was getting too old not to go without a wife and uh, picked Gina because she was such a hard worker. And it was a big mistake. Assume, I have no, no basis for knowing this, but it's in the family album. I assume that the child is, is my mother and father's firstborn child, who was a boy named Gino, which translates into Lily. And it was apparently God's gift to the world in my mother's eyes. He was very bright. He was going to be, you know, he was going to conquer the universe as far as she was concerned. And he died in a rather horrible accident when he was a few years old. And uh, my mother went into a deep depression and nothing we, her three following daughters, could do in our whole lives could ever come within one toenail of being measuring up to what Giulio would have been capable of doing if he had lived. So it was a pretty gruesome kind of, uh, you, know, you, you can't measure up to a dead saint, that's for sure. And there was a lot of guilt in it for her. People are, I don't know. 
My, my father had abandoned New York where he had a, a restaurant near the uh, Metropolitan Opera House where he would always leave the restaurant to, to function by itself while he ran off to the opera because he was insanely mad about the So opera. that's your older brother? So I guess so, yeah. And uh, they had this, this, this the boarding house in uh, a 40 room boarding house with like you know four bathrooms <laughs> out in the country and uh, it was, it was a quite good, good functioning and exciting place in, uh, in the 1920s. Of course, in the 1930s, it became pretty catastrophic. That's my father. And Jacinta, my grandmother, his mother. She was damn smart. They, 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 when, he, when he was five years old, he went to... Uh, they, they migrated to Argentina. There were all these wild stories about going around in a sort of a stagecoach in Italy to say goodbye and people feeding them enormous quantities of food and they wrap up the leftovers in napkins to take on the boat. And he was five years old and, and he was the oldest of her five sons. Uh, and he used to hide in the lifeboat on the boat going across to knit because he didn't want anybody to see him knitting. He liked to knit. <laughs> and the sailors would, would come in and, and lift up the wrappings of the lifeboat and peek in and, and laugh. But anyway, they stayed in Argentina for a very brief time. And one of his vivid recollections was of, of some guy with gangrene having maggots applied to his leg to clean out the, the wounds. And, then they didn't make it there. They left some branch of the family there, which is still there, but they came back to Italy. And she had five sons, named quite irrationally. Joseph was the oldest, Joseph, Giuseppe Rudolfo. And the second one was called Louis, and the third one was called Secondo. <laughs> ah, one, that's the third one. <laughs> and the fourth one was called Ercole, which is Hercules. I mean, we, we we live on a grand scale in this family, and the fifth son was Americo. Americo! Uh, and Giulio, obviously, who's the apple of everybody's eye. I, I don't remember my father having any pictures with us, squatting on his lap there, being idolized. Uh, yeah, he can, he can go through the pictures rather fast, I guess. How he died was, he was left in the care of the my father's mother, and somebody set down a huge pot of boiling water that was left over from the spaghetti, the interminable spaghetti being boiled around a boarding house, and he fell into it, and after three days of excruciating pain, he died. He was working in another part of the boarding house, probably making beds, and went into an enormous depression after her baby's death. And my father tried three more times to have another marvelous son and never had one. Uh, Gina withdrew completely, she may exaggerate this, but she said Gina withdrew completely from caring for her, attending to her, paying any attention to her, any loving attention to her after Gina died. So that some, in some formative years of her life, she was totally with a, with a mother who, who just did very minimal housekeeping chores with her, but, but didn't give her any kind of love or nurture. Nice little goat. Uh, so, so Gino, as an absent, you know, as a, the dead child, had an enormous impact on, on our relationship with uh, our parents, at least with our mother, who uh, was always trying to make us into the, the perfect son that she had lost, and uh, we never could be perfect. Seeking out of life, and then the woman she turned into a, a very uh, guilty, depressed woman who worked hard and who uh, very quickly gave up on sex and then began complaining about Joe and, and accusing him of everything, of, of being madly in love with his sister-in-law, Julie. It was a big soap opera kind of thing. And, of, 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 uh, and then she accused him of uh, homosexuality, among other things. And they eventually broke up. She said, choose between Jimmy or me. And Jimmy was an employee in the, in the boarding house. That's the boarding house in the background. Good old house. Mm -hmm.
Who's that in front? That's Julia. Really? Yeah. All the pictures are of him, huh? These are all of him in this yeah. And who's in the background? I have no idea who was wearing the best. Draw the Saints pictures. America pictures. drew this? No, I drew that. You drew this? Yeah. Oh, boy. Hey. It's like the little rascals or something. Sure, it does. It probably is the same uh, period. Is that a time, real person or is that a doll? No, no, that's a real person. About to fall out of the camera. Come on, that looks like a doll. No, no. Really? Really. Who is in this? Is this anyone you know? I, I, probably, but I have no idea who they are, and of course they're not labeled. Huh. Oh, man. What a cutie. Yeah. Look at that cutie. I think on the chubby side. You look like Connie. Really? Yeah. Well, that's all right. Curly what a, hair is nice. What a cutie. Yeah. But I gotta get a close up on this. Wait. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that cute? Right. What an expression. Oh, that's adorable. Adorable. My, my grandchildren she had in her arms at that point. She used to tell me that, thank God, she had gone for a walk in the woods and had found me under a mushroom or a cabbage or something. And I was terrified. I used to have nightmares. What would have become of me if she hadn't come into the woods and found me and brought me home? My father's mother never really thought it was necessary to torture us with nonsense like that. Is that you? I think so. Yeah, it looks like you. Yeah. Yeah. I used to get along with her. I mean, I, I used to take care of her a lot in her crazy days. Really? And we used to have these rather lively conversations that were, I, I suppose in retrospect, pretty irrational. but, but but it was like, like Connie practicing assertiveness on the elephants. I practiced assertiveness on my grandmother, who, not being capable of remembering it at that point, made it a fairly safe occupation. Well, the period piece, as far as I'm concerned, I have no idea what house that is in the background, or who these chubby ladies are, although one of them looks like she might be my grandmother. Just some extra feet behind her there, or is that, who knows? This really cute baby shot. This is so adorable. Oh, really? Oh, isn't that adorable? Okay. Um, my, my grandmother is sort of much more interesting than, than my mother's mother. She learned how to read and, and write Spanish when she was in uh, South America. And she always used to read the Spanish newspapers in Swartzwood. She pretended to be quite ignorant of English, which I suspect now, in retrospect, she wasn't. She was also a very domineering mother. Good, smart lady. And interesting, which my other grandmother wasn't. You can forgive people a lot, if, as long as they're interesting. People are. They're just period pieces. Maybe it was behind the cam. And my mother, who knows? I, it's such an uncharacteristic pose of my mother who's either frowning or working or both. So maybe it wasn't. Grandmother, that must be by there. And Cam, I suppose, since I'm not around. Great picture. You would have died in the woods if your crazy grandmother hadn't found you. You'd die in the swamp in the quicksand. There was a whole lot of useless terrorizing that was going on. Bailing suits. Itchy wool, it looks like. My very first love, Nothing to say about it. Who is that? Is that me or Cam? Can you tell the difference? I think it's Cam. Must be Cam. Because if I were there, I would be part of the picture. I should have been there. Why am I not in that picture? Well, maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe it's you. Maybe. I mean, it's weird not knowing your own self. 
They used to have these Kodaks with the with the bellows. And my aunts used to do this terrible thing. They would they would point the Kodak in general direction of where we were standing and then they would sort of wave it back and forth until they managed to catch a glimpse of us in the lens or whatever they were looking through. And then they would click. Maybe it was one of the Who is that guy? Maybe it was one of the kids from next door. He looks like a marmy devil. Well, the, the people next door were the Lucchettis, and uh, they had talk of names. The oldest was Socrates, as in Socrates. The second one was Renato, as reborn, and the third was Mario. And, you know, Is this you? I think so. What a cutie! Absolutely. Look at those legs. <laughs> you should recognize me by this, those little legs. What a cutie. I have a sense that this boy may be a cousin. I'm not sure. Who is that? That may be Vi. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like Vi. Robert would be the cousin from Ercole's son. Ercole used to build, bought some land off, or got some land in payment for unpaid, unrepaid loans from my father and built this very palatial kind of summer home down by the lake with a 10-foot stone wall all around it to, to make sure that we didn't get in. And so that may be when they were still talking to her. Created a lot of family folklore. Like, like when the bill collectors would come around, the, the parrot would be shouting, he's not here, or he's in the other room, or things like that, which <laughs> it would never come to the door to open it, and the bill collectors thought people would be hiding out when actually there really wasn't anybody home. Why, Cam, and my father's mother? Characteristic sort of squinchy look for her. Oh, she doesn't speak this, you say that. <laughs> look at the feet. <laughs> I don't know which side of the family she inherited the ankles from that she's always complaining about. Her life was divided between before the break and after the break, you know, going back to Schwarzman with this, this little dismal interlude at the, at the, at the orphan asylum. This knee elegant. Looks like a dummy. I don't know. Who knows? I don't remember things like holidays, Christmases, before the break. Why is he holding a broom? I don't know. I think the, 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 the Italian Father Christmas is much more punishing than the... Oh, the broom is for swatting you? Unless it's a, a gift for somebody. I can't imagine giving huh? somebody a broom for Christmas. We have the most awful gifts all the time. Really? Very utilitarian. Dresses. Fooey. Cam, I think. Oh, look at that cute little turn of the ankle. That little billowing dress. Caught. Cutie. Yeah, um, the boarding house. Well, there's the phone. Well, that's that. I don't know. The people used to come down to the boarding house for like two or three weeks, maybe the whole summer. Their husbands would bring them down and then they would go back and work and the women would stay there with their children. And they used to have good times in the boarding house. Lovely times. We broke up and my mother tore off and dumped us in an orphan asylum and took a job as a... Who's the big guy on the left? ...live in domestic. I have no idea. Maybe it's up with him from next door. Like, it, next door was a quarter of a mile away. Got a job as a live-in domestic and put us in this orphan asylum where we stayed for one year or two years. I don't know how long we stayed. Then she took us to New York, and we lived in New York for a while, and then we, when I was in the seventh or eighth grade, we went back to Swartzwood. The man on the left is Joe Morell, who is a sort of a weird man with a crazy wife, and that may be his son. And there was often a black person hired as a dishwasher for the boarding house in the summer, and that may be the child of the dishwasher. Oh, that's a school, one-room schoolhouse. 
I think, which had an outhouse that you had to go to outside. And it had a coal burning stove, you know, like a Benjamin Franklin pot bellied stove to heat it. It was quite primitive. And I don't remember getting very many toys or books by hand stress making. Where is that, a park? Um, that looks like it might be one of those landings. No, I, I don't know if they were built yet then. Along the East River, is that possible? Same dresses and same shoes and same haircuts out and pasted us into them and made us pose for pictures. You know, they took exactly the same picture of us doing exactly the same thing, just standing there with our socks falling down. With baggy dresses on. Hmm. I don't know. Total blank. What, what did we ever do with our time in those days? I have no idea. It's like you sat in the sun. We sat there a lot. We stood there a lot. One of the photographs that always dominated our house was this great big oval framed photograph. It must have been about two and a half feet high. Life size of Julia in black velvet trousers, shorts, and sort of something like a crepe de chine white blouse. I'm sort of dominated every house we lived in because my mother would cart it around and put it in the most prominent place. Hey, I was pretty by then. Learned to keep my eyes open for a photograph. Bring house people around and sort of. We had the undivided attention, shall I say, with our parents. There was always a lot of snow. The hunters would come in November. That was always exciting. It was a very masculine society, unlike the very maternal, matriarchy kind of society of the boarding house. I don't know who that is with us, or who we are in there or what that weird contraption is that we're squatting around. Kalamedica, I assume that is. He, he was always a very cheerful soul. He would come and bring excitement with him. He'd bring the, the New York world with him, in effect. He always came in cars. He once gave us the, the famous 28, 1928 Pierce Arrow. He gave it to us, of course, in 1938 or something like that. But it was a great car. I mean, weird. But he used to come with stories of high society and, uh, you know, the, the, the people who went to the restaurant. He died in the, in the barnyard and was there for years and years. May still be there for all I know. I don't know where all those strings are attached. Oh, it's a mittens probably. Good old chains. Many pictures of fathers and mothers in these, which is interesting. And typical, I guess. I remember once when there was a bad snowstorm, like two feet of snow, and it froze over so you could walk on the crust. And, and some of the peasants, like Frank Muratore and my father, and of course me trailing along because I go with the men <laughs> whenever possible because that was more interesting than what the women were doing which was always essentially cleaning the house and to track down the rabbits who eventually went back into their burrows and we never caught them. One year there was a, a bad fire in somebody's house during a snowstorm and, and the roads were not cleared and eventually a day or so later we could get up there with a, on a, with a horse and I don't know if it was a wagon or a sled but a whole bunch of us got on and it went. It was like one of the aesthetic moments of your life to be riding in a carriage behind a horse in heavy snow for miles. People would drive their cars out on the lake and make cuts in the ice and then load up the ice and bring it back to the ice house where it would then be it would remain unmelted, sufficiently unmelted, so that it could be used for refrigeration during the summer. They would put sawdust between the layers of ice as some kind of insulation, I guess. 
people would, would fish through the ice. And they could even have fires burning on top of the ice while they, they fished, dug a, you know, cut a hole in the ice and fished for fish. There were always these great stories about somebody get, getting rid of a cat by throwing it, you know, putting it in a bag and then tossing it through a hole in the ice. And then a few days later, this mangy cat came crawling home. It was a different cat, of course, but everybody assumed it was like the ghost of the cat that had been thrown in the lake. And it was all kinds of hysteria. It's interesting. I don't know. Apparently, uh, they built a big roof. Pretty efficient one. It's nice. about 10, 15 years later that we used to use. He's a great old car. Who's that up in front there? You don't have the slightest idea. They're good looking people, some of them. People just have great times. They would go off uh, in the early 20s to run the boarding house business with the running boards, which I loved. I think it's a great loss to a car design. They would go off on long journeys. You know, what was considered a long journey, but if you were going to go from Switzerland to New York, which was about 65 miles, it took like a month of planning before you got yourself packed and in the car to take the trip. Whereas now you would do a ground trip in one day without even thinking about it. They look like solid tires, don't they? No air. Those old spark plugs on the side? It's another chubby child. Do you know they're still playing Chubby Checkers records out in Nebraska these days? I hear them when I do the radio feed. I don't know what they use the dump truck for. Maybe to carve wood down to keep with the furnace used wood. We didn't use the furnace all the time in the winter time. It's right now. We're still in the 1920s. We're, gonna We're still in the 20s. Yeah. But not much to say about the 20s except that we were small children. Looks like it snowed a lot. Yeah, well, there's a whole bunch that somebody had a roll of film during the storm and used it all up. Uncle Amerigo, one more time. Hey. <laughs> You're in for Uncle Amerigo. Hey. Because of abortions, natural abortions. His wife was my mother's sister, Vika, Ludovica. So, what are those hats made of? Look at those boots with those clasps. I sort of remember them now that I see them. Although that may not be me at all in the picture, but I remember wearing boots like those. Oh yeah, I remember those. Sick boots. Great. Yeah. In one of the early manifestations. And my father bought it, I guess, around World War One. And it was, you know, it was in use as a boarding house and as our family home. Until 1940, I guess, when the, when the So wait a minute. So the boarding house was also your home. You owned it. Yeah. And oh, because I, I was under the impression that you were at a boarding house, like like you were put up for adoption and you were in a boarding house. No, no, no. Um, this is the boarding house. It, it had a long, much longer history. My, when my father bought it, it had already been a boarding house. I see. And it had about 40 rooms in it. And the... the branch on the right hand side, the low flat roof, two story extension on the right, was where we lived. Uh huh. And now how come he was so rich he could afford to buy a house like that? Cost nothing, cost $10,000 or something. And, and uh, he never finished paying it off cause, because of the mortgage and so we, you know, either he borrowed against it or whatever. But the banks reclaimed it around about 1940. Oh I see. So he hadn't finished paying it off after 20 years. 
But but in the summertime, the whole house was in use. In the left, in the uh, on the right hand side, there, the the L there. We didn't even go into the other place because it was freezing cold because we didn't heat it up. You know, we heated it up if they were paying customers and they weren't in the winter. So I was about five or six years old, I guess, when my mother and father separated. We spent one or two or maybe three years, I don't remember, in the orphan asylum that the, the nuns operated. Then my mother got a job which, uh, where she could come home to sleep. But that was a very interesting part of our lives by remote control, shall we say because we lived on 54th Street in this railroad flat. So this is the roof of it. And this is why. It's Cam. And we led very uh, poor lives there. My, my uh, grandmother, my mother's mother used to take care of us when we weren't in school. We used to go to parochial school, which was pretty bad. She was working for a man named Giuseppe Sterni, who was a big actor in the Italian uh, theater in New York, who had married a countess who had then been dis dis uh, disinherited because she married beneath herself. <coughs> and they lived on Central Park West. And my great memories of Giuseppe Sterni was, I guess, when he couldn't stand my mother's depression anymore, he managed to arrange for us to go back to Swartzwood. He helped negotiate <laughs> the, the reuniting of the family. And he also spent a lot of the time during the negotiations sitting with one or the other of us in his lap, you know, fondling our budding bosoms. Another great car shot. God, those dogs must have gone on for generations. How long do dogs live? I don't know. If they... We had Lorna and Fido, but they must have been dogs pre, you know, who gave them birth because... I have no idea whether this was before or after the reuniting of the family. It must have been. God, I don't know. See, and, and Vi tells me stories about my father, which I don't know, but that like, like when electricity came in, he was too impatient to wait for the lines to come in, so he built his own generator, which is pretty smart for a dumb Italian who had never finished, uh, you know, who had gone as far as, as, as a 10-year-old can get in the school system before having to drop out and go learn how to be a waiter and cook. His territory. We were living on East 54th Street near between 3rd and 2nd. And we used to spend a lot of time going to church around in that neighborhood. And, and on Sundays, we would go for walks on the 59th Street Bridge, which terrified me. I was terrified of heights up on the bridge when we were petrified of it. Boy, we sure had healthy legs, didn't we? we the, you know, obviously, the, we were well planted. But, hey, there was an ankle in the bush. <laughs> Cute with those little bows and those little smirks. My God, how can I stand it? On the other hand, it may very well have been. We used to live very impoverished lives. We could, we weren't allowed to go out in the street and play. We weren't allowed to. Uh, we used to sneak out to go to. I don't know. For all I know, this may pre. Who the hell knows what this was? But Vi eventually was going to high school, Hunter High School, commercial high. And we were going, Cam and I were going to parochial school. Oh good, I'm glad I have that sour look on my face. Like, I'm really not very happy about the whole thing. Right, essentially I remember this. I had a rather miserable childhood. Interesting, but miserable. I don't know, I'm just laughing because my God, what a wretched crew that was. I mean, we had turned into these, these uh, misshapen, well, that wasn't too bad then, I was still thin. Misshapen young women on the verge of permanent virginity, which was obviously depressing as no end. See the 59th Street Bridge in the background? Isn't that great? 
that must be the roof of my aunt's house. Why we had found it necessary to go up on the roof? That was so she, so we should go down in the street and play like like normal human beings. Go for it. Go for it. What am I going to, I even remember the dresses. My God, we couldn't have had too many for us to, to me to remember that. There was always this hand-me-down situation, too. And you notice who was at the bottom of the heap, right? In the background is uh, the Sutton Place area, 50 East 57th Street. My aunt used to live at 351 East 57th Street, which was a walk-up tenement. And for a while, we lived in that building, too. And my aunt Vika lived upstairs. And my aunts used to let us go into their apartment across the hall and listen to The Lone Ranger. That was our great program for the, for the week. Otherwise, we stayed in the back apartment and behaved ourselves. We were older than this, so this must have been a, a rare visit to New York before. High yoke dresses, um, ankle socks, same haircut with or without the bangs. Snapshots about the events and the lives we led. I haven't lost a knack of sitting with my legs apart on a skirt up. And the old 59th Street Bridge in the background. Yeah, right. Yes, who uh, married, who was Gina's sister, who married a medical, obviously after World War II. And with an absolutely elegant headdress. Yeah, so look at that. And uh, Vico was always saying, Oh, America, oh, America, because he liked to make little uh, double entendres or, or little dashing little jokes, and she found it very shocking. Not in front of the children, America. Yeah. And she's dressed in a very elaborate uh, dancing costume. Whether she ever did dancing, I don't know. My mother sort of had, had longings for us to be cultured. When she went by to learn how to play the piano. And she was quite mean about it. Like, she would tell Vi, you have to play the piano for a half hour. And then she would set the clock back so Vi wouldn't know what time it was, so the half hour turned into an hour. Sort of built up a certain amount of resentment towards the, the fine arts there. Just trio there. What kind of flowers? Snowballs. Uh, what do you call those flowers in the back there? Anyway. I don't know. My mother was probably a much better person than I make her out to be, except that she was extremely depressed and guilt provoking. And. Ambitious for us without ever giving us credit or giving us any sense of how good we really were. When she was about 17 years old, so I guess she was born around 1900. And she was the youngest of my mother's sisters and she came over. And, uh, you know, she joined the family trade, which was dressmaking. The, the she and Maria and Vika all lived together with Joe Pinning. There's a picture of him somewhere around here. And and her, their mother in an apartment on 57th Street, Street. And they saved their money. And they, Joe would play the stock market. They lost a lot of it in 1929. And then they saved some more. And eventually they had enough put together so that they could move out to Swartz and build a Lotus Landing for cash. And a, a big bar and restaurant kind of place, which they then operated until, I guess, the late 60s. And Vika married. They both married brothers, the Marchesio brothers, but the others never married. They all sort of hung around and took care of Uncle Pinning, the one-legged uncle. It's very, uh, sort of, you know, you can't be very up about this whole thing. 
Do the best you can. <laughs> Medico, hey! Thank God for Medico. How come he was named the Medico? Is that really his name? Yes, that was his name. Hey. <laughs> this is a great picture. See, now we're getting to the, to the these are the good ones. These are the good ones. Here, here try this one. Um, this is Secondo and a Medico in Chicago with Mama Marquis. Chicago? Yeah, we got relatives in Chicago. Oh, I thought that was another one of your relatives. No, no. Medico, Secondo, Chicago. No, no. In Chicago. No, no. I didn't know you had a relative. Yeah. Well, no, no. Chichita's husband ran away with a circus dancer. You'd be happy to know. That's pretty upbeat. Who's who's ran away with the circus dancer? Chichita, my, my father's mother. So who's going on? Who are these people? Secondo. Americo. Jacinta, his mother. I assume this is Secondo's wife. I don't know, there's an early picture of Eddie Kacha, looks like. I don't know who the hell that is. Oh, off the end of the bat. Ready? Yeah. This is Jacinta at 20. This is my father's mother. Yeah. She goes way back. My father was born in 88. So she must have been born around 1860-69. Who are these people? Well, the old lady is Regina, I guess. Uh, my mother's mother. And the two other people are the, her daughters, but they look awfully old to be her daughters. Well, the one on the right. It the says, it says... And daughter. Ganella so, and daughter. So Ganella, the, the mother's on the left. Now he's got little spots all over it, which I don't know what that means. I assume the one in front is a daughter, and the one on the right may be a sister with the whitish mustache. Oh yeah? That's Joe, huh? Looks like him. Unless he's somebody else. My God, I don't know anybody. Yeah, but I don't remember. Who are all these kids? Boarding house kids, the people who came for the summer in the boarding house, mixed in with uh, whatever. Gems is that your or... mother on the right? No. Who's that? The old lady on the right is my grandmother. Jichita. Your grandmother. Yeah, my mother was always working in the back somewhere, killing chickens or making beds. Oh, so she was performing laundry. primitive ceremonies in the background. And then. Uh... What a classic photo. Yeah, nice. With all the flowers in the background and all. Yeah, for many fans that you get the flies away with. Uh -huh. Mother. <laughs> Mother who? Lakeside House. Mother Lakeside House. Yeah, that's the Lakeside House. Who's the name of the boarding house in the back? Yes. Rose in the Rose is Frank's wife, I guess. The the. The, they, at various times, uh, this, the, the mother lived with different people because her husband had run off with the circus dancers, I said. Uh, so she lived with one son or another until they couldn't stand her anymore, and then they would uh, pass her on to the next one. And Joe eventually assumed responsibility for taking care of who's her. Who's Rose? Rose was uh, Frank. Frank? Frank? No, no. Joe took responsibility for her. The others used to give him a few dollars a month, 20, 30, 40 dollars a month for her upkeep. And essentially, that, <clears throat> that was the main income we had in the winter times during the Depression. So that she served to, to uh, support us by the money they gave to keep her out of their houses. They were all pretty good, pretty successful. The least successful was my father, of course. The girl. Oh, what do we find here? A nice old house. A big car. Station wagon. An early station wagon. My God. Amerigo. Lakeside house. Yeah. How nice of him to be. He was very adventurous. He liked to go off to Niagara Falls. He went back to Italy a couple of times. 
for a long time he supported the family house in Italy because he hoped that someday he would go back or we would go back or somebody would go back. I don't know if this is before he married. I can't imagine my Vika smiling down the local falls or wherever. Outings. That's nice. It was an innocent time, wasn't it? No television, no drugs, a little bit of drinking. Beach Hotel? What is this? Long Beach Hotel? Oh, they used to go to Long Beach to the beach because the, the ocean, you know, Long Beach was a great place to go to. I mean, I don't know why they didn't go to Coney Island. I used to hate the beach because I was very nearsighted. If I went in the water, I could never find the family <laughs> on the beach again. You know, you come out of the water four feet west of where you were and then you completely lost all connections with the family that you belong to, which I didn't realize it would have been not a bad idea. You're probably all waiters. <laughs> that was our social media in the restaurant world. Waiters, cooks, mostly waiters. Uh, this one, uh, he identifies somebody in here as Ludovica. That's the one on the right of Jacinta there. The blue dot? The blue dot is his mother, Dueza Verico's mother, my father's mother, my grandmother, Jacinta. And the woman on the right is Ludovica, I suppose. Oh no, Ludovica's the one squatting at her feet, I recognize her. Yeah, with another blue dot. <laughs> the blue dot has... Yeah. It. Oh, sure, I didn't think Ludovica was that pretty. Look up at the, the woman next to Jacinta again, how pretty she was. My mother insisted that my father had a crush on uh, Ercole's wife. And Ercole's wife was a Brazilian woman from a wealthy family. And, <laughs> she got bored hanging around. Is she court. in this picture? I don't think so. But she used to get bored hanging around the, the, the country place down by the lake. And so she started a love affair with somebody. And my father was always, according to my mother, rushing around in the bushes making noise to interrupt their idols so that she, she should remain pure since he couldn't have her. He didn't want anybody else to have her. But this may only have been my mother's feverish imagining. Father looks like a man. Who's Gio? George? It's like a party. Yeah. There's a the blue dots. The blue, dot, blue, blue dots are the two mothers. You know, my mother's mother and uh, Jacinta, my father's mother. I don't know who the people are. Who happened to be there in the boarding house would get the pictures, I guess. She's got blue dots on both arms. <laughs> Maybe he really marked her so she would show up in the photos. <laughs> Who's that guy with the sailor hat? I don't know. Uh, there used to be the people who would come down all the time, like a man named John Mota. That may have been John Mota, who, who were very debonair. They worked in restaurants. They were waiters. And, and they associated with, with well-to-do people and who went to restaurants. And then they would rub off on them and they would come down and be very classy. And he used to come down with a little wind-up Victrola and, and, and records that he would play to entertain us all. But, uh, pictures from Italy and my father had, my, father, my grandfather, whom I never knew, had a daughter who, who was uh, a stepdaughter, to, and, and we totally lost any type of sense of connection with her. And I guess the blue dot identifies the America's mother again, Mama Marchisio. He puts a blue dot on her in every photo. It's interesting, yeah. Look at those great dresses, my God, that's really something. Wow. Whatever this says, however something, her England, 1906. Now, when, when 
they, they were apprenticed as 10 or 11 year olds in Italy. And when they got old enough, like, like everybody else, they fled Italy to try to make a living. And they didn't stay in Paris very long. They went on to London and worked in very fancy restaurants. And my father worked as a, as a waiter originally. Fond memories of spilling English trifle on the Prince of Wales, but we don't know if that's a real story or not. It's a good story. X marks the spot, huh? Right. That's a medico, I guess, yeah. This Amerigo is a pretty heavy character. Yeah, and then they, well, he liked to keep things, which nobody else seemed to. And maybe that spot is Joe. Who knows? Full of 100-year-old scotch tape. Very disgusting. I don't know what that word is. Yeah. But I know this was ID'd as nice big nose there. <laughs> she looks like Ernest Borgnine. Oh, God, don't say that. And the dog looks all right. Yeah, the dog looks all right. Who's this? Is this your grandma? Yeah, this, you don't recognize her with this? I don't know nothing. Tell me about it. It's Jachita uh, again. What did they call her for short? We used to call her Nani. Nani? like your grandma. Grandma. More. That's grandma. Uh, Gio. It's Gia, the little boy who died. Oh, he looked like he inherited her nose. Oh, poor little boy. That's identified as me and Renato who was one of the boys from next door. I had a crush on him for years. He became a farmer and then later on he ran a bar. This is a medical, obviously. Handsome, debonair. You should never marry Lolita. So they all went to England and then Joe went to Jamaica and worked there for a while until there was some horrendous earthquake that turned the statue of Queen Victoria totally around and he decided that was not the kind of place he would like. And then from there, he and the various brothers came to New York. And, uh, oh, there was one brother named Arthur. Where did I lose him? And his son is a big lawyer. Arthur went to Washington. Buenos Aires, Argentina. So what's the Argentina connection? Well, we still have family down there. Marquisio was down in Argentina. Really? Who survived, and we, there was one of them was a school teacher in the Depression. I don't know if, if they, you know, America tended to keep track of everybody. He was sort of the amiable one who, who kept track of everybody. So I guess this is the Argentine connection. Frank and Vika at Long Beach. Right, good old Long Beach. Frank, Frank, Frank is the son of Secondo. Secondo went to Chicago and Frank is his son. Older than I am, I suppose. Her with the chickens. Usually, you know, there's a saying, don't teach your grandmother to suck eggs. She was a great egg sucker. You, you, we, we would have. Why don't you want to teach your grandmother to suck eggs? A, I guess it's a sort of a, you know, be respectful to old people that they know what they have to know. You can't teach them anything. But. We used to keep crates of eggs in, in the back room. Just for her to suck out what she felt I don't like. Know it. what she used to do, and my father used to accuse us of it because she was a reasonably skinny lady and it never looked as though she would have gone through a dozen eggs or something in a day. Up there that signifies something, but what does it mean that signify? Is there anything in the margins? There's a parrot there. Is that a parrot or is that a 
something blowing or what? I think it's always back here. Don't get around much anymore. About you. Don't get around much anymore. We changed a lot over the years. We built a great big dining room on the left with the porches. We used to have a hummingbird who would fuss at the bushes over there on the right. There was a pear tree that produced nice sickle pears. Is that what they are, the hard pears? Had a huge garden, vegetable garden that we fed the borders out of all summer. has to be the Pierce Arrow or something damn close to it. That's what the Pierce Arrow looked like. That isn't it though, that's another kind. I don't know, four years, six years. So who's in this picture? Well, I assume that Mama, England, huh? London. See now, in London, she was living with Mama Marquisio there, was living with uh, Oh, who's Arthur. the guy with the dot? Arthur. Arthur Marchesio. Who's the, Arthur? He's the, one of the brothers. A great uncle? No, no, he's one of her sons. And and she was living with him and Rose, who was an English woman, in England. Boxy looking photo, huh? Yeah, great. And so that one of her stories was going into a store and asking for potatoes and the, and the storekeeper was picking out small ones and she wanted big ones and her English was pretty shaky so she kept saying big pig and he thought she was insulting him and he threw all the potatoes at her. London, 1905. What is so thing? what are they doing over in London? Well, her husband ran away. She had five sons who were uh, <coughs> reasonably grown up and, and could work. And there was never any work in Italy. People from Italy have been immigrating all the time from here to there to there. So they went to London first and then they came here? Yeah, with some other detours. Like she went to Argentina and came back when Joe was small. Uh -huh. when, the, when the children grew up, she went to London and with various sons and then they came over to America. I see. And Joe went to Jamaica for a while. To Jamaica? Think. Yeah. Really? Uh, I can't read it that way. <coughs> His mother, but it doesn't serve. Unless it's a great, a great grandmother of mine. Yeah. That may be, she may be a great grandmother. She doesn't look that great. <laughs> I don't know who he is. There's something written on the. On the something. Father Italy? Wow, Arthur? Wow. What is that? That must be Jacinta's husband. Jacinta's the guy who ran away with the circus dancer. Great grandfather? No, no, my grandfather. My great grandfather. Your great grandfather. Well, let's get a close up on this guy. In case we ever identify him somewhere. Oh, he looks pretty sinister. He ran away with the circus dancer, huh? The big ears. Man, he has an elephantine ears. He's got great lips. Unbelievable, look at that squint. Right. Guess we can't make out any more than look that. Look at that hairy chest. Grandfather. Check out the hairy chest perking up out of the... Oh yeah, a little bit coming out of the... Great grandfather, cool. Cool, I see, I didn't know that. That's great, look at that. You see, I was essentially a product of matriarchies. To Mother Marchesio and her mother. Her mother? Do you see her mother in there? I don't. I only see one person. Yeah, so do I. But that's your. My grandmother. That's your grandmother. Yeah. My great grandma. Yeah. Ah, oh, boy. She wasn't bad. I mean, as as people go, she was more interesting. It's like she's feeding chickens. Again, she was useful. Stino. 
Tostino's in there somewhere. And Secundo is one of them. Looks like they're having a little, uh, a little party on the side of the road Who's or something. In his hands, yeah. There's a little child there. They're picking strawberries, probably. Strawberries? Yeah. Let's check this out. Well, mushrooms. I can't make it out. It's the closest Secondo I can Secondo must be the one bending over. Castino is that one, and Amerigo is the one in the straw hat, old debonair himself. Yep. Secondo. But when you think about it, you know, here's this smart but ignorant old lady. Peasant from Italy. Producing five pretty productive smart sons who uh, like like my cousin Robert who is the son of Her Hercule Hercules went to uh, MIT yeah and the second son Richard went to Cornell to learn his hotel management yeah uh, what's going on here uh, it was mother I mean Chichita, our, our grandmother all right Arturo Maybe my father wasn't the oldest. My father may have been the second one. Arturo may have been the oldest one. Arturo is the one who went down to Washington to, to work like in the Senate restaurant or someplace fancy because, you know, so they were all running away from Mama all the time. Yeah. For the medical. In a boat? They Is he in a boat? They had yeah. a lot of rowboats which they rented. I remember those boats. Yeah. Oh, that's good. This is, uh, yeah, this sister is sister of Jechita, which I never knew she had a sister, but there she is. There she is. That's great. Uh, chairs there that would be worth a fortune if this hadn't been burnt down. This place burnt? <clears throat> it's part of the place that burnt. The whole, the whole boarding house burnt down to the ground. There's nothing left but the cellar. Oh. I remember visiting there. Lost his leg at the age of nine and was smothered by all these women in his family. And uh, this is the Lotus Landing in back of him. He managed to manage their money astutely enough so that they lived pretty well to the end of their lives. Retiring. What's he got there in his hand? A rabbit? A kitten. A kitten. He's feeding a kitten oh, with a kitten. bottle. Aww. Aww. Uncle Penning. Yeah. The old Pierce Arrow. I assume that's why. Oh, yeah. It was a great car. It had a windshield in the back and a windshield in the front. It had cellophane windows. And when we went to funerals, they made us stay at the end of the line because it was pea green and didn't look like anybody else's funeral car. Huh. <laughs> Probably at uh, And America was quite a guy, huh? Yeah, he was a nice guy. I remember him as being a pretty entertaining fellow. Yeah, he's good natured. He's a lively guy. He liked to paint. He had a lot of enthusiasm for life. He had a frigid wife. Oh, this is Cam. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cam, huh? That's Cam. She was very 1950s pretty. Oh, yeah, I'll say. No, Cam, obviously, she knew somebody who took pictures. I like them pumps. Oh, man. Yeah. Cool. Now, who's here? That's Cam with somebody else. Who knows? Friend of hers? Friend of hers. Yeah. More. More Cam. And uh, this is you know who? Who? Me. This is you? With those yeah. pigtails like that? Yeah, I had long hair. Man, look what what door was that? 
Uh, a barn door. <laughs> a barn door? Wait a minute. It looks pretty seedy. Well, seedy barn door. Seedy barn door. I had long hair until I married Bob, and then he decided he got in the way in bed. Yeah. Well, we cut it off. Spicy. Back oh, to the okay. beginning. Back to the beginning. Okay. Oh, that's my mother. Who was very affectionate with animals. She was sort of very hands offish with us. Yeah. What are you doing? Toro? Toro. Toro with the cow, huh? <laughs> I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> eh, bully, bully, bully. Cam on ice skates. Cam on ice you and the 59th Street Bridge. It was on the roof. Roof, right, roof. Roof, roof. Roof, roof. Island diet and uh... Buttons. Heavily into buttons. Permanence <laughs> and... I have the slightest idea of Central Park. Or... Really? Maybe. Who a small dog. Who the hell knows where that was? This is you, huh? I guess so. Lake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's, what's, uh, what's she holding in her hand there? I don't know. That Y-shaped thing. I do Oh. I don't know. Maybe, is that partly, is that the thing from the rowboats, you know, that you put the oars in? The oar locks? Why, right? Yeah. Classic 1950s stuff, only it was probably all 1930s and 40s stuff. Alright, that's uh... Dante Restaurant Bar? This is probably once when we rented the boarding house to, to an incompetent person named Dante. We were putting up signs for him. And we went and lived on top of the hill on a, in a chicken coop that had been moved up there or something. Lakeside House, Gloria. Yeah. Gloria. That's you, huh? Yeah, that was in the 1930s. That was before we came to New York and got glamorous. And glamorous? You better believe that, huh? Not bad. I never saw myself as pretty, either. Now, somewhere along the line, we got this box camera, so we were going around taking reasonably good photographs. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. Oh, those brownies weren't bad. Those box brownies. <coughs> Turn it around. 19th, April 24th, 1943. I don't know who the guy is. I don't know. Obviously, I didn't master the bike at that time. <coughs> oh, such a fun. Classical necklines. What's that, a chicken coop in the background? Really, maybe that's the house we moved into up there. The chicken coop that we were living in. You lived in the chicken coop? Well, it was cleaned out. And I hope they cleaned it. <coughs> this was a Labrador retriever that we had. It was a big, stupid dog. But affectionate. He used to jump, to get jealous of kittens who jumped in your lap, and then he would jump in your lap. Since he weighed about 70 pounds, it was not a thrill. Come on. No, it wasn't. What's that lakeside? What does that mean, lakeside? Lakeside was a pennant, but what that means, I don't know. It has, who knows? Homemade dresses. Badminton? Tennis or whatever? Yeah, homemade hairdos. Boy, it, was, it always seems like it was winter time around there. Well, you could, because you know, like twice a year you can afford a roll of film. Uh huh. That's not bad. Uh, I don't know. Irma? Who the hell knows? It's Easter over here? Probably. With the de de attachable, detachable lace collars. And the hat. The hat was the giveaway. If you have a hat, it's Easter. What say about this photo? Another badly broad photograph. 
Didn't anybody ever give me a decent bra? Clothes and makeup and all that, and I, I never was. I once figured out, essentially, that, that I spent a good part of my life, in, in hindsight, wanting to be the, to replace the son that my father had lost. Oh. Which meant that didn't do sexy things with your face. Standing around in the lake, we used to have really nice lakefront, as you can see there. Partly sandy beach, partly uh, shoreline, a peninsula that stuck out into the lake. Uh, you can tell I had a real sense of style uh -huh. and presence. I guess also I was overpowered by by, by two stylish sisters. Really not. My grandmother, when she was really senile, used to take off like on a stormy day like this, snowy day like this. When she was hungry, if you didn't feed her real fast, she would take off. She'd say, I gotta go home and feed my sons. And she'd go off and, and we'd get calls from people like a mile or two miles down the road saying, hey, the old lady just passed by a few minutes ago in her shirt sleeves. And off we would have to go tearing off to, to get her in the car and bring her back. Crazy lady for your formative years. A bubble off plum. A bubble off plum is, a, <clears throat> you know, like bubber, bu plumbers. A bit, 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 that's all, folks. That kind of thing. No, no, you know, where you have the level and it has a bubble in it. Oh, a bubble, bubble off plum. Yeah. I thought it was like a bubble off plum, not a bubble off the plum. The U.M.P. office. Uh, Regular George O'Keefe type. Right. You know, the, the poet. Yeah, I'll say. Or something. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't my first pair of glasses. That was probably the first one. All right, wait but a second. Was... Let me get it. Let me get it straight here. Yeah. All right. We used to have these these loony scenes. These these loony scenes. <laughs> needless to say. <laughs> Sick. Hey, hey, when you talk depression, you talk depression. Needless to bitch, let's take someone. Something smells like it's getting really hot in there. I have to check yeah. it. This was when I was at NYA with Rebecca. off too much otherwise we're not going to hear what you're saying mm -hmm. uh, uh, come on you're not doing horseless buggy going nowhere with the, the you know the standard soulful look soulful is right boy you better believe it what's the book do can't make out the title gotta be able to make out the title pretensions of being i think the negative is backwards Mm. Typical. Mm. Who's this? Me. It's you. Looking like my grandmother, don't you think of it? A bit. Oh man, she's got a mouth like a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something witty now. Witty? I have no idea what one could say about that. There's some hairdo. People sitting on the ground and still on the benches, the boarding house in the background. Does it look like the boarding house? Maybe. Oh, I know where that is. That's the garage uh, on the left, the peak roof. And then on the right side, you know, the house on stilts, which was attached to the garage, was like servants' quarters. And what I call the chicken coop was essentially that house which my father managed to lower to the ground without wrecking it and roll on, on logs up to the top of the hill and that was the chicken coop that we lived in. It became a chicken coop later or something. It's wild. Yeah. What's an off the face hat? Yeah, with the brim off the face. You know, like the Queen of England always wears off the face hats so that her nose isn't obscured. And I see. My Aunt Mary. What a hat. Fantastic. She probably did the whole thing. Too much. Right. They were 
really classy people there. Oh. You're on a tractor seat. What is it? That's, that's Cam. Cam, what is this? A, a harvester yeah. or something? Yeah, like you know the thing that picks, that rakes up the the straw, the hay. Farm girls, huh? Yeah, sort of semi. Look at him. I had no sense of presence. I had no presence at all. As waitresses in the in the boarding house in the summer times. We'd pick up a few hundred dollars in tips, which we would then turn over to my father under protest in October to pay the, well, the overdue bank mortgage bills. This is the good old, wonderful, wonderful Pierce Arrow lipstick, 1950s lipstick and eye makeup, which I never used to wear normally. But I did for photographic practice purposes over there at NYA. Those funny p p pictures in the 40s where, you know, you didn't have eyelash uh, makeup on your lower lids. That's you again, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. How old was I then? I don't know, 20? Not even. No, about 18, 19. Down at the lakeside house, all the land you see on this side of the lake belongs to us, belonged to us, which was a lot of land. I'll say. Uh, uh -huh. We hated it. We, we couldn't wait to get away from it. Why? The three of us, because it was essentially a very unhappy place for you. You know, for and we did nothing to help save it, although we were taking very modest amounts to save it. So then my father took off for Vineland, for South Jersey with, uh, with his mother. And my mother took us off to New York to start a new life. We had graduated high school then. My cousin who was a chef. I don't know what's in the tray there. Looks like a rabbit. Possibly. Oh, this was up at the top of the hill when we were living in what I call the chicken coop. And my father used to prepare nice feasts, and then we would take them out and put them on the table outside. And eat outdoors, all oh, fresco. With whatever relatives came by. Father, this is one of the borders. This goes way back. But I used to be intensely jealous of uh, the women who would always be making up to him. Whoever she was. Who is she? Jacinta, my, my grandmother. But that forehead, wrinkly. Which is very, maybe at the World's Fair or something. But he took her down to Vineland with him, made a chair for her with a potty under it. He essentially took care of her until she died. Can you make out? That's America. Dining room? He built that. Where the, where the porch used to be. He extended it and built this dining room and built an enormous stone fireplace for it. You know, with the help of local. He designed it and he built it. Cousin and me, I guess. Karma. We were sort of just taking care of chickens and loafing and some reading. Going swimming, doing human things. Planted castor oil plants, which make enormous leaves and raise and, and, and poisonous berries. Self-destructive. Right? It's castor oil being plant. Right. Absolutely. What are you doing? You looks like you're playing it like a guitar or something. That's that's cute. Poisonous, I heard. The beans are poisonous. They make castor oil out of them. With the chickens. She's really in there with the chickens. Yeah. Everywhere she went, she found chickens. Chickens, chickens. After he built it, which used to be the porch. Not bad, gorgeous, obviously. I don't know. 
just love old cars. Little cherub there. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm working on developing all the fat cells that will return to haunt me for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. Yeah, but definitely the cherub scale. So yeah, being the little Gia, one. Gia. Gia, Gia. Lily, my brother. I see. Yep, looks like a little Italian kid. I think this is the, the big fireplace over here. Right. There's a whack, 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 whack. Oh yeah, yeah. she's a whack. Not bad. Cutie.